Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. And welcome to the Crush It in Sales Podcast and also the Good Karma Success Coach Podcast as a bonus episode this week. I'm your host, Melinda Van Fleet. Well, May 2nd. May 2nd, yep. It's hard to believe. It's it's actually, now it's pretty easy to believe that time goes by pretty quickly. <laughs> Did you have your parents tell you that when you were a kid, that the older you get, the faster time will go by? Yeah. I remember I did. my dad telling me that. Yeah, I never believed him because everything seemed to crawl. Yeah, like summertime seemed to crawl. And yeah, my dad was right. So chalk one up for our parents. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but I'm excited for this month. I have a very focused month on work, new opportunity that I'm now part of Southwestern Coaching and Consulting. And you've got a full schedule. Yep, a full schedule. And I think I only have one day available this month, and it's, yeah, I do. I've got one date available. Otherwise, I'm just looking at my schedule now, and then my June is, is filling up really quickly. I think I've a couple weekdays left each week, maybe one or two each week, but the weekends are already full. So Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So we just say some prayers for the weather to hold out. Yep. <laughs> that's is what it is. It's fishing. That's it. It's a fishing industry. There is no... <laughs> weather don't have expectations when it comes to weather and, oh, and starting you just a business segued perfectly yep. don't think that it's going to work work out every day with the weather <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're going to talk about on this podcast is expectations because there are many forms of expectations and we're probably just gonna be able to crack the nut a little bit on this but we're hoping that it spurs some dialogue if you listen to this as a couple or even just internally. It makes you start to think about your expectations of yourself, of others, and also, too, like understanding what someone else's expectations may be of you. And, yeah, there's a lot packed into that. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with it all the time on the boat. Yep, on the boat, off the boat. <laughs> at home yeah, at home what yeah you mean miracle expects a car yeah. ride every morning so they have my little shih tzu now she expects a car ride every day because i gave her a car a couple car rides it's kind of like having one of those days <laughs> it's kind of like fishing where you crush it a couple days and then everybody thinks it's going to be like that yeah that's <laughs> so, true. so i've got a little dog that she thinks that she ought to go on a car ride and yesterday afternoon I was just really busy, and we keep the offices separate. And granted, our dogs are like, how old are they now? They're Oh, gosh, 11 and 10? 11 and 10 years old, and they're in very good health. And the little one, she's been wanting to go for these car rides, and she came back here in the back room, and we never let them back. She came back, and she went to the bathroom on the floor by my foot <laughs> because she was angry that she didn't get to go for a car ride. She sent a very clear signal about her expectations. Right. It's kind of like, it's like fishing. <laughs> I've had to really work on expectations from a vantage point of making sure that my high expectations of myself, so the expectations I have of myself, I'll reframe that sentence a little bit, don't rub off on other people. And do I get it right all the time? Absolutely not. I think it's just how I'm wired as a, a high performer that it also comes out onto other people. And it's definitely been a challenge that I've had to work on over the years because it can end up really hurting relationships and I don't mean it to. So it was something that bubbled up a lot in my corporate experience as a buyer and leading teams. And it would pop up on reviews all the time. And it, how it would pop up was in terms of you're really great at your job. Your sales numbers are really, really good. We love you, but half your team loves you and half your team hates you. And I never could figure out like what, what was going on. And unfortunately, in the corporate world sometimes – there's corporations that deal with it from a passive aggressive standpoint and you're always kind of in trouble and going down to HR, but they don't really crack the nut on what's happening, like really what's going on 
underneath the surface and understanding too that all people are different. So I had moved to a different company, Shop NBC, and I got really, really fortunate at that company that when it bubbled up again, the head of HR, Brian, he sat down with my boss at the time and said, you know what, we need to hire a private coach for her so we can get to the bottom of what's going on and solve the situation because she's a high performer, So, but half her team hates her. And they did. They hired a private coach for me. His name was Peter Briggs. He's a super nice guy. I had never had a private coach before. I had had a speaking coach when I was a merchant for Victoria's Secret, but I never had a coach coach. And he came in and we met, gosh, for months, maybe like six months. And what he did was he did a deep dive confidentially with everyone on my team and everyone that I worked with as like supporting roles. And he came back with the results and it was still the same in terms of like half the people love you and half the people hate you. And then we started to dive into it. And what was happening was my expectations were coming off on other people and it was just not coming off in the right way because not everyone wants to be CEO. (laughs) And at that stage of my life, I thought everyone wanted to be CEO. So I had no idea like what I was doing and it was causing a lot of harm and damage. So I remember at the time too, he had me read a book on emotional intelligence, which also helped shed some light onto the um, challenges I was having. And it was painful. It was a very, very painful part of my career and my life. And it's actually when I met Ryan And he had to deal with a lot of it too. And, you know, I wrote about this in Confidence Mastery for Couples when he looked at me straight up and said, if you don't stop acting like your mother, I'm leaving you. And all of those things coming together really built awareness around expectations and how you can start to manage them within your own sphere of people and how you communicate on a daily basis. And it's a lot of work. It's work that still goes on, but it's an aspect that a lot of people don't realize may be happening to them in their lives. Yes. Nope. I had a lot of work, more work than (laughs) what I even care to even talk about. (laughs) Could be many podcasts. Many podcasts. This could be many podcasts. Many podcasts. Many podcasts. Many podcasts. But these are things people, number one, don't talk about because they may feel shame or embarrassment Mm -hmm. or fear around it. Or, you know, it's going on in their head and they they don't know who to talk to about it, right? Right. And Or they might not even, like me, like have like full-on awareness about it. And I think it's just a really, really important topic because if you can't manage expectations, then you end up being disappointed. That's, right? that's very correct. So yep. if you have high expectations of someone else yep. and they don't live up to your expectations, and I'm using air quotes, mm-hmm. then you're disappointed, Yep. right? And that can build up over time yep. and lead you to not take action or have um, a poor relationship with someone that leads to various outcomes. That's correct. And if you keep getting beat down, and it's because of the expectations you're put on by other people, then that can cause lots of um, setbacks in your life too. That's correct. Yeah, it's it's um that is that is so true. <laughs> yeah, and it it's, causes you to not move forward. Right, and it causes you to shut down and shut off. Mm-hmm. And I think that I see that a lot. So I can I can relate to that personally. Of personally, I can. Yeah. So I've been I've been in that spot. Um, I've been in that that spot last year. I just recently had an experience where I've um, I've done some things for some people and have helped them out, and I really don't. It's like it's really kind of bizarre. I say, for example, I have helped some guys out. And with the getting their sonars set up and getting things dialed in for them and helping them get better. 
and I was out there fishing and I seen the guy and he drove past me and he marked a number I was fishing on. So, and that was somebody I helped out. That happened last winter. So it happened actually in March. So I told my client, I go, as he drove past me, I go, watch. And he hit the and he hit the digit. So it wasn't an important dump number because I was wahoo fishing. So, but the point is, is that I didn't expect that from that person mm -hmm. because I helped them elevate to another level. Mm -hmm. So that's a, you know, I'm getting kind of wound up because I'm, I'm kind of emotional about it because I have helped a lot of guys and I've seen a lot of things turn on me and flip mm -hmm. because my, what I've done for some people has really elevated them. But on the other turnaround of things is that I got stabbed. I feel I've been stabbed. So my expectations were, were like really kind of like what you're, what you're saying is that I'm at a very high level in my mind and I work really hard, but it's kind of like goes back to the corporate days where I had under you know different people under me that I elevated, and then they just kind of were like bizarre. Yeah, things didn't turn out. Things didn't turn out. So I see the same in the fishing industry. Mm -hmm. So I've seen the same things going on. So hence why sometimes, you know, I'm just like, hey, you know. Another example that is something you deal with, Ryan, that you've done an amazing job with. Let me circle back really quick. The other piece is just to work over time, like recognizing that that's a trigger and figuring out how to manage it is where the work is. And we'll get to that after I share this example. We'll talk about my bucket tool. But when you have people that expect a lot from you, that is also one of the things about expectations. So what I'm super proud of that you really set boundaries on over the years is people that call you up and they want to fill coolers full of fish. And we've talked about this before. Oh, the cooler coolers guys. Coolers full of fish. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, Ryan has gotten really good at saying, you know, that's not the type of charter I run. You know, that's not his business model to fill coolers full of fish. If it happens, that's great. But that's not Ryan's business model. His perfect ideal client that is an energetic alignment with him is someone who wants to have fun, enjoy the day, let the captain be the captain, and learn a little bit, and then catch something for dinner. That is our client. That's our target client. So when you get stronger and you set boundaries around people that have expectations of what you should be doing, and that is, that's strength, that's confidence, that's building confidence over time, then your energy becomes aligned to those perfect clients and, and they find you right? and, and it works out. So that is definitely something that I know and I, again, really commend you on, Ryan, for, for doing that over the years. Yep. And we've seen the proof. Like, it I works. Know. It I actually know. freaking and I got, works. It's so amazing, but I have, I had a, I've got some, I have a, a really good, strong, regular client base. And the guys that are catching tables full of fish that you see in my Instagram photos, those guys are very aware of the amount of fish that they're catching. And they are taking, the, taking those fish home and they are cleaning them themselves. They're that's clean, great. They're cleaning the fish so themselves. So that's been part of the, like... And that's, process too. That's been part of the process. And if we're having a, 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 if we're having a good day, and I set the expectation, as, and then the guys take their fish and they clean them. Yeah. I am very manageable. I manage the fishery. Because you know captains that won't even clean fish at all. I know captains, or captains that, that charge. I know captains that. that charge for the fish. And so then, you try to manage your expenses, right? The, and and then, that's a piece of it, right? Then they then of they have our business of model. our business model. They have table time. Yeah. If you catch um, twenty yellowtail, they're back. They cut an hour off your fishing time, and they go back and they use that as to time clean. to clean the fish. Yeah. I don't do that. 
Mm-hmm. So it's managed. And when we do go back, I set the boundaries as far as if somebody wants their fish cleaned a particular way, um, that's not the deal, man. <laughs> I, I tell them what I can do with the time I have, and that's how it goes. If you want to clean a certain way, you can bring your own knife. So, so yeah, that's just a great example for others to think about, you know, where do you need to set boundaries in your business or your personal life to manage other people's expectations that you're not aligned with. It may not be your business model, like what we're talking about here, or it may just not be something you personally want to do. Like you don't feel good about it. You're like, no, and that's okay. Like all of these things are okay because when your energy is in alignment, that's when the right things happen for you. That's when the right people are put into your path or the right opportunities appear. So remember that, like there's no award at the end of the day for being a people pleaser. There's really not. No. Because when you're being a people pleaser and you don't feel good about that, then you're out of alignment. Like it's, it's just a simple law of the universe. So it's really, really important. So I want to circle back to number two, the second story Ryan shared about um, people and on the water and expectations. And this is something that I've talked about before, which is the bucket tool. And it's a really simple way to categorize things in your brain so you can take the pressure off and move forward. And it's really, really simple. I've written about it over the years. I've podcasted about it, so you've probably heard it before, but with any good coach, repetition is super important because we learn by repetition. So the bucket tool is as simple as this. When you have a situation going on, such as what Ryan used as an example, number one, is it something that you should just let go? Like you're like, you know what, I should just let this go. Maybe there's some inner work to do. So Ryan, for example, was sharing like current examples, but it triggers him to his past corporate life, right? So that, as some coaches would say, is shadow work. So you have to work on like going, okay, like it's bringing me backwards, maybe bringing me back to my childhood, which is super common. Everyone, everyone remember there's things rooted in your brain from childhood. But is it something you should just let go? Be like, you know what? I need to be at peace with this. I need to do the work and I need to let it go. Number two is where it's kind of like a mid-range and you may need to have a conversation with someone. So you may like this person, but they're like totally taking advantage of you, but you like them. So you need to have a conversation because just like I said earlier, we don't talk about the things going on in our brains. (laughs) We also are not great communicators. It is very rare if someone's a really great communicator. So you have to have a conversation. Go out to lunch, call on the phone, do something. Texting is not a good conversation. Emails are not a good conversation. You need to have a conversation with your mouth. So have the conversation and try to work it out and come to some type of peaceful agreement or resolution. And number three is always the worst case, which is, and sometimes it's not even like the worst case. That's not even the best mindset I'm going to say. I'm going to call myself out on that. But it's most drastic action, let's put it that way, where you have to say goodbye. Like you have to cut ties with the person. And that's okay too. Like I have cut ties. When I was a sales rep, I cut ties with stores if they mistreated me. And it never, ever, ever came back to haunt me was a bad idea, nothing. It was always good. It worked out in my favor. So the universe tests us all the time. We're always being tested. And sometimes there's a negative situation that's put in your path that's meant to be a test. It's meant to make you stronger. Can you handle the disappointment? Can you handle the challenge? Can you handle the trigger and work through it so you can get stronger on the other side? And sometimes that means letting people go. That is okay. Letting people go. It's a strength. It's a confidence builder. And seriously, I can't think of one single person in my life that I have let go and regretted. I really can't. So good people always show up like more prominently 
and bigger numbers as I let go of the people that aren't an energetic in alignment or have high expectations or other things, let's say. So three buckets. And if you do the mental work, sit quietly and think about it, like it will alleviate so much pressure and you'll be able to move forward in a peaceful decision and be happier. Yeah, that's, that's all what we want, right? We all want to be the happiest. Yep. Happiness and freedom. I think those are like things that people desire in their lives. Yep. Happiness and freedom. That's a. That's always the. I wake up every morning thinking about that. Mm-hmm. And freedom is happiness. They go hand in hand. Yep, they go hand in hand. So. Yep, that's what I. I want to spend time with people that are good people. Um, and that's, Mm -hmm. and it's like anything else, surround yourself with good folks and. Yep. And then sometimes this goes with bucket number three. Sometimes I'm going to call this out. People don't walk up and wake up and they go, I'm a bad person. So sometimes like, you know, the bad people, they don't know they're bad people. Like, and bad's kind of a very gray word to use, but you can say it like jokingly. Like, so yeah, you just gotta, you know what? I'm moving on. Yeah, I'm moving on, on and I'm good with that. Yeah. And the more in the people that are more energetically aligned, yeah. that'll work out in my favor. Right. If the vibe isn't there, if I'm with me, then it's, I just move on. Mm-hmm. I, and I move on quickly. Yeah, move I don't on e- quickly. Yeah, you just, like, I don't even try. And, I just move on. And you, yeah, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong about that. There, it, absolutely nothing wrong about that. The yeah. world is huge. 7.9 billion people. Like, come on. Yeah. It's a really big world. Like, yeah. Everyone will survive. Yep. yep. It will be fine. Those people will find people that are better energetic matches, and you will find people that are better energetic matches. Yep, exactly. That's just how it works. That's how it works. I mean, you break up with someone when you break up with someone, right? Yep, exactly. So it's the same premise. Same premise. You Something. move on. You move on, and you move on, and I'm okay with moving on. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Yep. So we, we packed a lot into this podcast here. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? No, I, I really, um, I really don't have anything to add this morning. I, I'm working on a new blog. You know, that's I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited You're about the blog. You're crushing your blog. It's really good, and the content's really good, and and I'm trying to give people some really good information so to to help them out. Yeah. So and the blog is also on the app. So if you're on the app. There's, um, you can access the blog through the app and then you can also access the blog, obviously through the website. Yep. So, um, and Ryan's been announcing it more. Oh, and it's also an in Instagram in his, what do we have? Bio FM. We don't have link tree. We have yeah. Bio it's FM. in the bio FM on the Instagram. On the link. So the link. you can access the blog that way too. If you follow Ryan on Instagram, you can go into his bio, click the link and it should pop yeah. up there too. So, you know, I, I think back to last year at this time and I would, I was, you know, before we wrap it up and there were a lot of things that were going on in my life last year when, you know, I had a lot of things going on in the water and all that stuff and a lot of bad people that were in my life. And I've cleansed a lot of that stuff. I cleansed it and I figured out different ways to do things. And um, then I was ready to start moving forward with the blog. So I needed to be in, in alignment with my inner self as far as what type of information I wanted to continue putting out to the public. Mm-hmm. So through the blog and the podcast and, you know, from what we're talking about today, those were things that were going on at that time that I just didn't address and didn't work on um, just for various reasons because I didn't really know. Mm -hmm. So, and it just, and I've continually every day work on it. And, and Melinda has been a good, is, um, is more than just a, you know, she's a business partner and she's my wife and she, and when I've just learned to ask for help. So as far as learning how to control different things in my life, as far as being better. So I was using tools every day and practicing and um, all that other good stuff. So there's more to it, but um, I'm in a good good alignment to, to put things out to people now, um, more so than I was last year at this time, mm. going into COVID and out, out of COVID and all the crazy shit that was happening to me out there and um, the crazy Instagram messages that I would be getting. And so it just, but I learned how to deal with all that stuff. So, 
and every day I work on it. Yeah, and and I appreciate that, Ryan, and and that's the message for everyone out there: is every day it's work. It is work. It is work to work through these things, which is why people don't freaking do it because it's not easy. No, it's not <laughs> but easy. People like you know. I always say like you know you can copy everything about Ryan. Like we know what's going on. We're not stupid. And you can copy all that stuff, but what's going on in your brain? That is yeah. really the most important yeah. piece of everything. Yep. What's going on in your brain? Yeah, what's happening in your brain? What's and going on? What are you trying to do? So, so when you work on all of that and do that mm-hmm. inner work, that will bring you success. Whether you're listening to this as a, an angler or you're listening to this in my world, you're um, an entrepreneur or a salesperson. You know, it's the inner work Mm -hmm. that you have to do for all the other things to work out for you. And that's why having a private coach is so important. And that's why I always share my story about Peter because, you know, I'm so blessed and grateful that I had him as a coach when I was in my early 30s because it just brought awareness to things that I didn't even, like, realize was going on and um i'm so grateful for that experience so yeah Yeah, that's it you know and i i caution the one last i caution guys against there's a lot of like competitiveness in this world of fishing oh it's the most competitive thing it's the most competitive thing ever it's kind of and it's gotten really kind of out of control in my opinion and i don't i just don't get it to be honest with you guys i just don't get this whole well i've said forever Is because anyone can fish. Yeah, anyone can fish. You can be tall, short, male, female, any demographic nationality. You can be fat. You can be skinny. Like, there's no boundaries. Yeah, there's so no there's no boundaries. So it just opens up, like, anyone can do it, which is fantastic. But then that just breeds a whole other level. It breeds a whole other level where... Competitiveness. Of somebody that... And had, money. That wasn't... It, yeah, that gets thrown into the sport and they, they don't really understand what competitive nature is. So it's used in the wrong ways. Yeah. So because they don't have that background, so they get tossed into this, this world of fishing and, and then they see somebody that's having a lot of success. And then I, I see it a lot and I see it like with recreational guys which, God, I wish someday recreational fishing is the best thing in the world. I went recreational fishing for the first time. And you know what? I did not give a shit what I caught. What did you catch? Some bonitos? I caught some bonitos. <laughs> and it was the best day I've had where I was able to go out there and troll around and, and have a good time instead of worrying about, oh, my God, what am I going to catch today? I need to get that Instagram post. And it, you know what? It was a freaking awesome time. <laughs> Awesome. And if you're like a recreational fisherman and you got something going on in your brain with competitive nature, seriously, you, you got to wake up and look at yourself, man. Yeah. You really do because Just have fun. Have people. some have a good time. If you bought yourself a new boat, learn how to run it properly. Yeah. I mean, don't be running it up and like there's so much that you can learn. And when you're getting all weird out there, and I see it. I see it at the dock, man. It's like, oh, my God, what's going on with these people? And if you don't think that we see that you're just a triggered mess, like, you're kidding yourself, people. Like, it's, seriously. It's crazy. Seriously. So, do the inner work. Do the inner work. Take a moment and just realize, what are you trying to accomplish? I mean, seriously. So... Just, man, I just don't get it. Yeah. Somebody asked me about, like, why you fish for muttons all the time. I go, because that's what, what's biting. And they taste damn good. <laughs> and they taste good. I catch a whole bunch of other shit. I had some guys that came out with me the other day, and they were just having fun catching. Like, I go, yeah, we'll try, but, you know, sometimes they're here and sometimes they're not. Well, There's other fish, you know. Like, so, a hook goes in the water. A hook goes like, in the water. Let's keep it simple. Like oh, a, my God. A hook goes in the water. Like, yes, we try to target, but 
if a mutton gets on the hook, that's amazing. Yep. They uh, taste great. Thank you, God. Oh, my God. Then we found a whole bunch of buttons, and that's great. We catch a whole bunch of those. But there's other days where there's a whole bunch of other fish there that we catch, too. Mm-hmm. So it, it's like, hey, you know. They didn't get the memo. Yeah. The, the salmon didn't get the memo. Yeah. And don't, <laughs> and don't get all angry and aggressive that, oh, my God, I got to reel in another amberjack. Oh, my God, my world's coming to an Be end. Be grateful. Be grateful it's a fish. Gratitude. I go, it's awesome. What so, is going on? <laughs> I mean, yeah, sometimes those amberjacks piss you off, but in the end, Oops, we're, I gotta get going. something's biting. All so. right, we got to end this podcast. I've got a client call. All good. Thank you guys for All tuning right, in. Thank you. Follow us, me, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or Instagram, and reach out to me for private one on one coaching. Just use my personal email, Melinda at MelindaVanFleet.com. Yep, and you can email me at goodkarmaryan at gmail.com and then follow me on Instagram, good karma sport fishing underscore FL underscore keys. All right, have a great May. Yep. Thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. All good. <laughs>